Morning everyone, uh, I'm Jan Smith, a young wildlife and nature photographer from South Africa and in this video um, I'm out here and uh, I'm going to talk about and show you a few tips for wildlife photographers. This could apply to all nature photographers but most of the tips and tricks are focused more towards you know bird photography and wildlife photography. So um, yeah, uh, let's get into the first step. Okay, so let me start right off with the first step. Um, so if I come into a location, normally, you know, you would try to find a subject by looking, you know, to find one. But here I can listen, and I'm hearing a small, small bird that's beep, 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 chirping right here in this, in this thorn tree. And I, I can't see it now with my eyes, but I know it's there because I listened. So, my first tip is use your other senses as well, not just your eyes, to locate the subject. So, use your hearing, maybe smell, I mean, that might work, but, you know, I'm, you know, focusing on sound here. So, use your ears to try to locate your subject. Okay, so now that you heard your subject and you're now walking towards where you're hearing its sound, conditions might be changing. Just like right now, so if I'm overexposed, the sun keeps going in and out of the clouds, so I'm sorry for that. Um, now you're listening to your subject and you're now following him or following the sound and you might change conditions. So you might go from a sunny area into a more bushy area with lots of shadows. So my tip is, keep your settings up to date so if you have a setting where the sun is bright keep your settings for that maybe drop your iso get your shutter speed up a bit you know maybe drop your aperture to make the image a little bit sharper and now we're moving into a part where there's a bunch of shadows maybe try to keep your settings adjust your settings then maybe push your iso a bit you know, take a test shot and make sure your settings is how you would like it to be if you found whatever you want to shoot. So for birds that would be quite fast shutter speeds. So my tip is, while you are moving through different conditions, update your settings the, um, continuously to keep, you know, the work that if you just see that shot deck and you have to take an image, that you don't you know have to fiddle around with settings you already updated it for the conditions and also update it for the animal that you you know might anticipate you want to shoot so in this field i know there's not going to be you know an elephant standing right there so i'm not going to shoot big bucks and stuff mostly birds um maybe um a masont I'm not sure what's that in English now. Mostly birds, so I'm going to keep my settings for bird photography. When I'm going into a national park here in South Africa where, you know, big um, uh, wildlife is mostly, you know, what you're going to shoot, you can drop your, your shutter speed and stuff like that to update what you want, what you're anticipating you're going to shoot. So the step is update your settings the whole time. Okay, so now the next step is you know, now you find your subject and you see it keeps taking off and landing on the same, you know, perch or maybe you're trying to, you know, photograph a bee, you know, come sitting on a flower. So I'm going to show you now, let's record on this camera. If you have a flower that, you know, is there that you want to photograph when a bee comes sits on it. So you want, actually want to photograph a bee. So the tip is, rather than trying to follow the bee around with every flower it like lands on and trying to focus and, you know, get everything composed and everything, you know, everything in the image right, rather go to one specific flower, pre-focus, switch your camera to manual focus, pre-compose, compose your image beforehand, expose your image beforehand, focus your image beforehand everything ready when that bee comes all you do is push the button rather than trying to follow that bee around 
and missing thousands of shots that's out of focus or miscomposed or but your biggest problem would be the focus so the tip is just go to a flower i'll sh put it on the screen for pre-focus and wait for a bee to come that's you know it could take long but at least you're guaranteed a successful shot rather than trying to follow a bee that you're basically just wasting a bunch of memory and your chance of actually getting a well lit composed and in focus shot is quite low so the tip is pre-focus pre-compose and pre-setup basically okay and then another tip for a bird sitting on a branch if that bird takes off um, if you see that bird wants to take off you can see it's like looking around or um, Egyptian geese make that blowing sound <sighs> um, a lot of the times before they take off so if you see your bird gets kind of uncomfortable on that branch you see you, uh, it might take off you can judge or predict um, the direction it's going to take off in by looking at the wind direction now at this moment there's not a lot of wind so I'm totally clueless um, when it comes to predicting to what direction a bird is going to take off or land but if you have wind the stronger the wind the, mo the more you know clearly it's going to be like that so a bird always well most of the times takes off and lands into the wind so if you want a bird to face you go sit upwind so that the wind is blowing uh, towards your subject and that'll make the bird take off towards you and land towards you so that is a tip for you know trying to predict in what direction a bird's going to take off and also if you want to photograph the bird coming in for a landing and you don't want to capture it actually sitting on the branch but rather before that while it's actually still in the air you can pre-focus once again like the previous tip you can pre-focus just behind the branch and then while it comes in for landing just before it sits down you can start the burst or if your camera shoots quite low frame rate maybe you have a better chance of just you know actually trying to get that one shot on the actual location that you focused so make the bird fly into your focus plane um, that's also a very good way to capture a bird coming in for a landing or taking off so you can pre-focus in front of that branch or perch or whatever and capture the bird as it's flying into your into your focus plane okay now if you have a branch and a bird is sitting on it and it's windy now this branch is going towards you and further and towards you and then goes back again back and forth back and forth and you're trying to you have autofocus engaged on your lens and your camera tries to you know keep bzz, 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 focusing and keeping focus on your subject but it can't manage to do that and that's because the camera is the the algorithm and the software is designed to you know see if a subject is still and if it's not still it's moving the camera you know tries to figure out okay is it coming towards us or is it going away and if it's going away it just keeps tracking it while it's going away or if it's coming closer it keeps tracking it while it comes closer but a camera doesn't like when a branch is moving back and forth the whole time it can't really figure out what it is doing so the camera actions well at least with the cheaper lower end cameras I don't have experience with high end cameras but the low end cameras they just they are keep delaying so if the branch is forward they are still coming forward and then the branch already goes backwards and it's just your camera won't actually fire because it won't it will never find the thing actually in focus and if it does it's probably not perfectly in focus so simple solution switch your camera to manual focus you know just focus somewhere around the bush i mean in inside of the movement and then just fire off a burst of shots 
brrrp, and then you'll, you know, hopefully have one where the branch is actually where your focus plane is. Um, so obviously you should also set your camera to burst mode if it's not already, if you're doing wildlife photography, it really should be. There's no reason you should, you know, it should not be set that way. But yeah, that's the tip. So if you have a bird sitting on a, a small branch, a big tree will be a different story because it's quite a slow mo movement and your camera could get, you know, keep up with that. But a small branch just going back and forth like that a, uh, a camera will really struggle to keep it in focus. So switch to manual and burst through, burst through a cycle of the bush and then you'll probably have a shot in focus. So now just before I, you know, put, give you my last tip, I just want to say that um, from this video on every video that I do out in the field that I actually capture some images because some I just go out and shoot the video. But like today that I'm actually trying to get images as well. Um, I'll try, or I'll, yeah, I'll really try to put, obviously the best images I'll show you in the video, but I'll try to actually put a bunch of failures in as well, just to keep it very real, you know, because wildlife photographers, we don't always get just the best images, you know, we fail a lot. That's like a small grey bird. We fail a lot and I want to show that also in the videos. The last tip is when you're shooting in direct sunlight like I am now, the, um, the tip is wear a cap and I'm not doing it now. I forgot it at home so I'm actually not even obeying my own tip or rule. Um, use one of those caps and then it'll cover your viewfinder and it'll push out all the glare and stuff that shows up in your viewfinder. Oh, I can't get it in focus, all the branches are in front of it. I have to switch to manual. So that's my tips for today. Use a cap to put out the glare from your viewfinder and make you, you know, everything more clear in your viewfinder. So that's my video for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have fun shooting.